All right, so here we are with chapter seven, um, and we're gonna do the chapter seven um, big comprehensive problem, and this is very similar to um, one of your homework problems. And this is really, um, this problem encompasses the most important topics for us in chapter seven, really, uh, really the major portions of chapter seven for us. So what are we wanting to do? We are gonna calculate current earnings and profits. We're gonna figure out the amount of dividend that's reported, um, and then we're gonna figure out um, corporate accumulated earnings and profits at the beginning of the next year. Okay, so there are three parts to this problem, but um, I'll make three videos. So this will just be um, part A. Okay, so our main concern with this part will be to figure out current earnings and profits. Okay, so let's get started. All right, so what I like to do when I start these problems is go through all of the information and kind of make notes along the side, and then I'll create my, my tabulated um, schedule going from taxable income to current earnings and profits. Okay, so I like to look at all my information and kind of highlight what I have so that um, it's easier for me to um, get it all organized. All right, so what do we know? Well, we know they're an accrual method corporation and they report taxable income of $1.46 million. Well, do we need to worry about that? Yeah, we absolutely do. Because remember that um, our calculation of current earnings and profits starts with um, taxable income. So we absolutely need to pay attention to that, okay? Next, what do we have? Well, we know that there are lots of adjustments, right, from taxable income to earnings and profits because um, earnings and profits is an economic view of the corporation. And so we have to adjust, all right? So where is a, a common source of, of adjustment? Well, depreciation is a common source of adjustment. And what do we have? We've got... Um, We've got 200,000 of maker's depreciation, so that's tax depreciation, all right? And then we have straight line depreciation, so that's our earnings and profits depreciation, right? So what do we know? Well, we know we deducted more for tax than we would deduct for earnings and profits, so what do we do? Well, we get to add back, okay? So I'm gonna put plus, I'm gonna change my um, my color here. Hopefully that should, there we go. Okay, so that's $80,000 and we're gonna add that, okay? Now what do we have? Well, we have this capital loss carryover, okay? What do we know about capital loss carryovers? Well, again, we get to add those back from an economic perspective, okay? So that is also gonna be an add back, all right? What about an NOL carryover? Well, we get to add that back as well. So that $25,000 gets added back, all right? And now we have, um, what do we have here? We have a $65,000 capital gain from distribution of land to the company's sole shareholder, all right? Now, as soon as we see a capital gain from a distribution, we have to look at that. So what we have to do now, oops, is, there we go. Okay, so, so we have to look at some of the particulars regarding this distribution of land. And we see that there was a parcel of land with fair market value of $75,000 and a tax basis in 10, 000, of $10,000, and there was an assumption of a mortgage, okay? So how do we figure out gain? Well, we look at fair market value versus basis, okay? And so we are told that their tax basis is $10,000, <clears> excuse me, and we're not told that there's any difference between tax basis and earnings and profits basis. So we have to assume that those two bases are the same, okay? 
So what does that mean? Would they have recognized a gain on this distribution? Yes, they would have. But the gain on that distribution would be the same for tax purposes as it would be for earnings and profits purposes since this basis for both tax and ENP is the same. All right, so let's come up here and let's look over here and I'm gonna write no adjustment. Okay. All right, so now we need to go to the next group of things and these are things not included in the computation of taxable income, all right? Now, the thing, it's not going to be on this list, but we always have to think about federal income taxes, all right? So one of the big adjustments that we have to make from taxable income to earnings and profits is to remember to subtract out federal income taxes. So I'm just putting that because we're going through and we're making notes about how each of these items impact our earnings and profits calculation. So we want to make sure we get that on the list to keep ourselves straight. All right, so now we've got tax-exempt income. We know that was not included in taxable income, but that's certainly going to help our economic situation. So we have to add that life insurance proceeds of $250,000. Again, life insurance proceeds are not taxable, so they're excluded from taxable income, but they certainly impact our economic situation. Okay. Excess current year charitable contributions, they get to be carried over to the next year for tax purposes. But for E&P, what do we get to do? Well, we get to subtract these out. Okay, tax deferred gain of $20,000 on a like kind exchange. Well, this is not going to um, increase or decrease our, our current earnings and profits. Okay, so this is a like kind exchange, so we get to ignore this in our calculation. All right. Federal income tax refund from last year, that is not going to be um, an adjustment, all right? And the reason is, is that they are an accrual basis taxpayer, so we do not have to make an adjustment for that item either. All right, what about non-deductible life insurance premiums? Well, they weren't deductible for tax purposes, but they're deductible for EMP, so we have to subtract that out because that's going to that's going to decrease our economic situation relative to our tax situation. Same thing with interest expense um, related to tax exempt um, income. Okay. So now we kind of noted what needs to happen with each item. I'm going to scroll to uh, to a blank page and uh, and we'll we'll write out our schedule so you can see it all tabulate. All right, so here we go. So first, what do we have to do? So remember, this is a. Oops, I'm going to change my pen so it's not highlighting anymore. Okay, there we go. That's better. Okay, so we're looking for their current EMP. What do we do? We start with taxable income. And that was given to us. All right, and then we need to do our addbacks first. Okay, and we had all kinds of addbacks, so we'll just run through that list of things that we that we already discussed. Okay, so we have um, we have to add back. Remember, that was 
$80,000. Um, and then we had net cap loss carryover. And that was $10,000. And then we had net operating loss carryover. And that was $25,000. Um, and then we had some, I'm going to move that up. We had some tax exempt income. And that was $5,000. Um, and we had uh, life insurance proceeds. $250,000, not $25,000. Um, and that takes care of all of our ads, I believe. Yes, it does. All right, so now we have items to subtract. And remember, the first thing we have to subtract is federal income taxes. Okay, and, and how, how do we figure that out? Well, take our taxable income, multiply it by our statutory rate. Okay, and so that gives us, um, remember all of these items are gonna be subtracted. Okay. All right, so that's our first one. Then we had our um, Excess charitable contribution. And that was twenty five hundred dollars. We had um, a life insurance premium that was not deductible. And that was, what was that? That was $3,500, all right? And then we had non-deductible interest expense. That was $1,000, okay? And so total all of that up. And hopefully, we get current earnings and profits of $1,516,400. There we go. All right, so there'll be separate videos for B and C. Actually, B and C won't be that long. I may put them in the same video. Uh, we may do separate. Um, we'll have to see. All right.